All right, so you should see the tentative agenda. So um, thanks so much for coming, you guys, and helping me to figure these things out. And so I just wanted to, first of all, kind of see who would be willing to take notes during our meeting, if someone could do that. Yes, I can. Okay. Unless someone else awesome. would like to. <laughs> Come on, don't jump at it, everyone. It's so exciting to take the notes. Okay, and so then Gina, you can send Carrie the, the, the minutes as well. Can, is that okay? Uh, okay, okay. And then I'll always send an agenda to Carrie to post before the meeting, just so that you know you don't have to under, you don't have to worry about that part. And then um, thinking about the publicity for this committee, just speak, I don't know if publicity is the right word, but just to make sure that everyone has access and feels like we're being transparent. Um, I just wanted to see who would, well, I guess we won't have the live stream link today, but well, we had the link, but obviously it was not working. So, um, you know, Gina, is that something that you could do as well, just because you've been doing it for the board meeting? Yes, I can take care of that. Okay, sure, good. And then um, can you then ensure um, that the meetings are posted on the MSA webpage too? Because like if you're emailing Carrie to yep. give her the link for the meeting, it just makes sense that you would say, hey, the meeting's on this day, can you post it? Yep, that okay. sounds good okay. to me. Okay, and then I'll email the community just like I did this past Monday or past Friday or whatever day it was, just so that people are um, aware of that, that it's coming up as well. Any other like business types of things like that that anyone has a question about or suggestions about? All right, so I just have a couple of questions about the makeup of this committee and what your vision is um, for your role on this committee. So, um, I mean, we'll have the other five committees that I think will do most of the work. So do you just see this as like an oversight or what, or do you guys want to be on the other committees? I'm not really sure what you're thinking right now. So I think in our conversations, it was, this was just a group from the board to help support you to get things done. Or if you're running into trouble or, you know, how can the board help? And as you said, oversight, I think those are good words. Uh, but yes, leave the, you know, the work that you need done, you send to the committees if you need help, you know, making, you know, does it make sense for this group to look at this or whatever, we're your sounding board for those kinds of things are my thoughts. And, uh, you know, certainly I'm glad to be on one of those committees. I can't speak for the others. I agree um, with Rob, yep. That's totally fine by me. I mean, I'm willing to do whatever. So be on. I can be on the subcommittee. I think that was the idea though, was we were originally meeting just to get this going. And now that we have a chair um, and, you know, delegating the roles to the other subcommittees, I don't know if we are needed, like, like how you would want this to roll, but I agree with Rob. Okay. Me too, that's how I see it too. And I, I'll be on any committee that you want me to. <laughs> okay. I will help anyway. <laughs> Okay, sounds good. And then um, I know, of course, um, Gina and Rob, you won't be on the board that much longer, but um, did you want me, and I'm more than happy to do this, to come to the board meetings to give the update? Like, I, I feel like that would be the most effective, but I just, I don't want to step on anyone else's toes. Like, Jennifer, if you're like, well, I'm already at the board meeting, I'm happy to do it, but it's up to what you guys kind of were thinking as well, so... I think that would be great. I is that what happens usually? Because I know other committees don't usually speak at the board meeting, but I think that would be wonderful. Right. Okay. Well, the last time I was the chair of the personnel committee, and that was like, so I was just at the board meeting anyway. So I just spoke up. But I just think for the idea of transparency and community, that it would make more sense if. At least one of us talked about it. Just if people had questions, then they could also ask questions and they probably would, you know, get a better answer or whatever if I was actually there. And But it's up to the board too. So I don't want to, I mean, I don't need to go to another meeting, but I usually watch the board meetings anyway. So <laughs> not a big deal. That sounds good. If you're willing to do it, I think that'd be great. Okay. Okay. Anybody object or... 
No, I think it's a great idea. Okay. All right. Good deal. All right. Um, so kind of thinking about like my understanding is that we will do an interim, right? That's what the board decided is we're going to do an interim. Okay. Yep. And then so how long do we want the interim to be here? Like, I think I skipped one thing, but that's okay. Um, I think that the interim should be here for a year. That's kind of what I'm thinking. And that's what I feel like I heard from the board. Yeah, that's, and that's what the recommendation was from our visitor as well. And I think it's one of those things that we're just really upfront is we want to make this work uh, for our community. And so I think, you know, hiring the right interim knows exactly what that means is they have a one year plan on how to uh, bring us back to the community that we desire. And uh, if, you know, how they envision helping that, uh, I think the board would love if we we're able to hire full-time person with some overlap for the interim, I think uh, that would be ideal. Sorry, two people have been at my door telling me it's not live streaming. So yeah, <laughs> okay. So did you catch that? I know you were, you're. Yep, yep. So I mean, yes, yes, yeah. So yeah, and I agree that the person should be here for a year. And I think that gives us the ability, and maybe you just kind of said this, Rob, but I think this is what you were saying, was that it gives us the ability to have someone from the outside come in and fix maybe a few things that we need to have fixed or at least give some advice about some of the issues that we have. Yep. Okay. All right. Anybody else? All right. So how many um, interim candidates do you want brought to the board? Like just thinking about like last time um, we had 26 experienced candidates and we did um, like the personnel committee or the group I was in charge of did two interviews and then they brought three people to the board and the board did like the final interview of three people. Does that seem like a process that um, would, is kind of what, what like you had in mind as well? Or like, I think it's really important to have three candidates because like on the day of the interview, if one of them drops out, you don't wanna to bring to the board only one candidate. So I think you have to at least have three on for that final interview. Cause I mean, that's what happened this last time is that they only had two. And so then one person dropped off on the final day. And so then we just had one candidate for the board. Yeah, I think that's really important for the director. But if we end up with only two good experienced right type interims, it seems silly to interview somebody that we're not interested in just to have three. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Anybody else? No. Nope. All right. That sounds so the next. Oh, yeah. yeah, sounds good to me too. Okay, sounds good. All right. So then I um, kind of worked a little bit on the ad, and actually, a lot of this ad actually came from. Um, I'm also on the Recruiting Diverse Task Force or Recruiting Diverse like Staff Task Force. So we've been working on kind of this ad anyways. So I just have this, so, but I obviously have a few questions um, about you know, making sure the position begins in June, 2021 and ends in June, 2022. Does that seem? Doesn't it end in May, 2022? I've this looks like 13 months to me. Well, it would depend on kind of when it started, right? Like if the person is, is the person going to be oh, starting like- Because right. the current position is up in June 30th, right? Okay. Right, yeah. right. Anyway, right. The yeah, that's true. I mean, the point right. is, is that, yeah, that's, that's fine. I get it. Right. It's a year long. That's what I'm trying to say to the potential candidates in- Right now, we think that it will actually start July 1st, but we could, you know, get, yep. if, we, if we just say June, that gives us some flexibility is what I was thinking as far as what the actual starting date would be, because we're not saying a specific date. Yeah, overlap is always good. Yep, yep, all right. And so then, um, you know, I started off with the idea of administrative licensure, but I think if we have some people who have been retired, they might not have their licensure. So I'm not sure how we want, like, you know, their, their licensure might have lapsed. 
So I'm not sure how we want to, like how we, what, what things we want to be required in that job um, or to apply for the job even. Like either like current or past Minnesota administrative yeah. licensure. Um, yeah. Is that fine? Does it have to be a Minnesota one if they had a Wisconsin one? Is that okay? I would say. I think so. Okay. So I'm just going to change it to current or past administrative licensure and not even say Minnesota. Is that okay? No. Yeah. Okay. When you have a, this is, I, I'm, I'm not sure about this, but when you have a license, administrative license, do you also have a, a master's or like a, what kind of degree do you have or does it matter? Or do you just um, you, have a license? Um, you would have had to have at least a master's. A lot of okay. them are beyond a master's, like they're a okay. specialist degree. Right. So, well, our, right. Yeah. So at Concordia, we have a, and it's called an EDS. And so, uh, and then that okay. leads to an EDD if they want to continue for a doctor. Okay. Okay. Right. I wasn't right. sure how that I believe worked. John just got his EDS or is just finishing it up and then would plan to go on for his EDD doctorate in education. Okay. Okay. Right. So, yeah. And so I, I feel like if they had this licensure, the degree would already be included in that. So okay. we wouldn't need to say anything about that. Okay. That sounds good. Is that okay? All right. Um, then I did want to kind of put in there that we would like someone who had experience working as an interim. Like to me, that's kind of important because they have to come in and do some of these things to kind of help bring these two sides kind of back together and kind of think about, you know, what does that take? Um, what things, you know, like uh, Miss Dana was talking about, you know, we might have someone only that's working four days a week, but we might have them working on some special projects, you know, like we obviously want to continue with expansion, you know, and I think that Gina, you haven't been on the personnel committee meetings, but both Rob and Jennifer have been there. And I think that some of that personnel stuff is stuff that like an interim could really deal with because they don't have any, like, you know, they, they don't have to worry about a contract next year. So, you know, trying to figure out some of those things, I think it was really important to put in here that we really prefer someone who has some sort of experience as an interim, but it's only preferred. So obviously if we get no candidates who have experience, then we can always kind of dial it back to, you know, just that idea that you had experience as either the leader of a charter school or a superintendent or something like that. Yeah, and I don't know, I mean, there's some people that are trained to be interims, but I don't know if you're just gonna, that's just adding to the sentence, right? Experience working or trained as, you know, so I think that goes without saying that they may not have the experience yet, but they were an administrator and they've had specific training on what it takes to be an interim. Okay. So I think that's fine. Okay. And then I just put some stuff in there about charter school resources, like knowing about a little bit about that a charter school, just because, I mean, I don't want to get a superintendent who has no idea what happens at a charter school either, because then it's going to be a rough, like a rough issue, a rush, a kind of rough for them, but also rough for the teachers too, to be like, well, that's not how it works at a charter school. So I just put knowledge of charter school resources, finances and management that okay or do we need more or do we do we think we need to put anything in there about the size of our school like it like a medium-sized charter school I mean some charter schools are really small mm -hmm. I don't know if that would make a difference or help at all no <laughs> Just, I'm trying to remember if we say it down below Okay, yeah, we don't say it in here. So we could certainly say that here. I suppose they could do their research, but I don't know. Uh, I think we need an, uh, an A in the last sentence there to all rigorous college preparatory curriculum. Read that for me, see if I'm wrong. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Okay. 
I feel like the size of the school would go into the second paragraph. Yep. So if we say, I'm, um, I don't even know how to put that in there. Could we, could we put a sentence there in that paragraph saying something to the fact that uh, we are currently uh, whatever it is, 500 whatever students uh, with a goal to grow to X by Y, because I think mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I think if they don't understand that it's not about maintaining our current enrollment, it's about the only way growth in, or the only way uh, success in charter schools has been mapped thus far is that uh, it's a growth model. I don't know what number we're looking to grow to. Uh, I wonder if we can find that in that, that was in the last BOD packet, I think, wasn't it? Okay, I'll just look it I'll up look and that. try to find it. I mean, I can always put that in there later. But does that make sense? MSA is a medium-sized school with over 500 students and we are looking to grow to whatever the number is. Yep. Okay. All right, and then I just found out that US News and World Report has ranked us 99 in the country. So we broke the 100 finally, right? I mean, I think it was like 156 last time, but I just added that in there today, so. That's great. Very amazing. That's yeah, kind of that's pretty awesome. Yeah, top 100 schools in, this, in the country. Um, All right, and then- I send out an email to the staff letting them know that the live stream's not working, but that we're yeah, recording yeah. it? Is yes, perfect. Like yes, thank okay. you, Gina. Yep. Yeah. All right, and then I know the links aren't live in there yet, obviously, but I'll make those live. Um, and then we don't need to figure out the salary right now, but you're gonna have to figure out what kind of benefits packet you want to offer and what type of salary. Um, I have no idea how you would do that if it's based on experience or if it's just a flat fee. I don't know, you know, I feel like it's going to be some sort of negotiations because, you know, as Ms. Dana said, if we have, you know, somebody who wants to only work four days a week, um, do we offer them extra like stipends to do some of these extra projects? And so like to me, I feel like that's kind of the board's responsibility to figure those types of things out because that's the financial aspect. And that's what the board would be overseeing for, for the candidate. I mean, I don't know if other people think that I should be figuring it out. I certainly nope. can work with Cody to do that, but. I know Cody's working on it. And exactly when, when we interviewed with, uh, was it from Sam, right? Uh, what's her name uh, at the beginning if I, at our board workshop? Nancy. Uh, Nancy, Dana. Nancy, right. Uh, I mean, I think she was pretty cl clear that, uh, you know, there's going to be people that are, have way different needs, right? Some of them will already have uh, all of their benefits. And so that won't be interesting to them. And so uh, other things would be more interesting. And so I think Cody's got a number and some ideas in mind. So I think we can take care of that. Okay, perfect. All right. So I think that that's all I have for the ad. Is there anything else that you think needs to be added to the ad or anything? Any other questions about the ad or anything? Do we need to put a, a close date or a date when you want the applications due? So they yep. do it. <laughs> yes, yes. So I think, yeah, we need to talk about all of that kind of timeline and stuff too. So, I mean, I guess to me, I was kind of thinking um, kind of like the third week in May kind of-ish, just so that we can start I mean, it sort of depends on how many candidates we have, obviously, right. and do how many interviews does like the hiring committee have to do to get down to two or three candidates for the board. So it does kind of depend on that. So I was thinking of kind of making that tentative date be, you know, kind of that third week in May, assuming that, I mean, we have to post the ad internally first, but that's only for three days. So then if I post that today or tomorrow, 
um, that just, and all I have to do is send it out to the staff. So it's not like a really hard thing to post or anything. And then after that, it gets posted on the website. So that would either be this Friday or next Monday. So people would have, you know, a good three, three and a half weeks kind of to, um, you know, see all the information and apply. Does that seem like enough time? I think so. Okay. But I don't know. Do <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, if we don't have any candidates by then, obviously, we would keep it, you know, I can go through and update all of the ads and change that end date. But that's kind of what I was thinking. Can you say the end date one more time, Lisa? Sorry. Well, I'm, I guess I didn't think of a specific day, but I was thinking of like kind of that third week of uh, May. So, well, maybe we should just say like May 21st, because that would be a Friday. And then the hiring committee could make sure that they met on the 24th to go through all of the inter all of the resumes, all of that kind of stuff. And figure out who they want to have um, interviews with, you know, on the 24th, they could determine that. That sounds great. Okay. Now, if we want any of these interims to interact, and I know I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but if we want any of the interims to interact with the students, well, I think, I think that'll be okay. Cause I think we can just talk to Michelle Krakowski and get some of like the students who are on um, student council, even if school's over, I'm sure they would be willing to like participate in some sort of director interview by the students, you know, type of a thing. Cause I just think, I know that the interim might not have as much interaction with students, obviously as the regular director, but I would like to at least see that even if it's in Zoom, I would like to see them, you know, with this idea that we really count on our students to be leaders and to be part of a process. So I want the interim to understand that too. So even though I wouldn't think we would have like a huge big like day at MSA, just if we could have a few of them Kind of do some sort of interview in zoom i think that that would be helpful to the board to see that as well but we can talk more about that later too unless anybody has specific ideas right now right i mean that can't that's not necessary to be their you know a strength because we need them to have strengths in other areas where the final person that absolutely needs to be a strength okay so if we, I mean, we could go longer than if you wanted to more, you know, one more week into May, if you wanted to, then if we're not worried too much about the students doing any sort of interview. I think we should have a goal of, of getting a person on board. So I think that's my opinion. Okay. I mean, I'm going so to May, May 21st or May 20. Oh, go ahead. No, that's what I was going to say. So May 21st, that's what I was going to say. Okay. I say we could still do the student thing, um, but like Rob said, if it it doesn't have to be like okay, it, it shouldn't be the yeah the, the strength that we're looking for. But I still want somebody that's decent with the students. Yep, right, yeah. So okay, all right. Let me go back to the agenda then. All right, um, job ad. All right. So the task forces or the subcommittees. Do which name do we want it to be? And this is kind of in case you don't know, like the task forces there's not as much that you have to apply or like you don't have to follow open meeting laws. And so I'm, it's not that we like wouldn't do minutes or anything, but I know last time there were sometimes we had to like have a meeting kind of like, hey, we need a meeting tomorrow. And so it's easier when you call it a task force because it just makes it a little bit easier to, um, you know, kind of function. And since we have such a short amount of time, I was just worried that if we call it subcommittees, then there's, we have to, you know, post our meeting three days ahead of time. We have to have the agenda posted three days ahead of time. All of those things just make it harder. And it's not about not being transparent. We would still try to do all of those things, but just with the recognition that I don't want us to not be able to do the job when we only have, you know, really six to eight weeks left just because we decided to call it a subcommittee instead of a task force. But that's really up to the board to kind of decide. Um, when I was on um, academics, we had all sorts of task forces. 
And as the chair of the academics committee, I just made sure all of the minutes for the task forces were included in the minutes for the academics committee meeting. So that was the way I handled that. But if you guys wanted to be a subcommittee, we certainly can do that. I was trying to- I am totally fine with it. First, but I guess uh, task force all the way. I think task force, that's what this is for. These, we're giving them tasks, right? It's not a, we're not setting out a charter that, so I think that's, the right way to go. Okay. I agree. I think we need it with the time restriction, but then we just still shoot for getting out all the minutes, the, the agendas, like it just might not be within that three day realm. Right, right. Okay. All right. Um, so then the next thing is I did go through and try to make up some descriptions for those task forces. Um, and then obviously there were some things that I didn't really know at the time. So I left obviously some of those things blank. So we'll be able to fill those things in today. But I did come up with five task forces. So we have the interim hiring task force. So that will be the group that like does all of the interviews, figure out the interview questions, post the ads, do all of those things. And if there's any sort of interaction the board wants, they would be responsible for that. And this task force would basically begin like like next week would be like my kind of goal for them to start meeting because obviously they're going to have to get started here pretty quick and they're going to have to meet at least once a week if not more i think by the time for the uh, for all of me i mean that's just going to be at the very least what needs to happen um and this obviously this committee would be kind of done then you know in the middle of june when the person is hired um, and then, of course, I did also just kind of jumping ahead, I did make an intra or a final director hiring task force, and I could see that there might be people who want to be on both of them. And so in the and it might make sense because, okay, now you've had experience hiring the interim, you've done some of that. So now you want to move on to hiring the final person, which totally would be fine. And so um, when I send out the committee, like asking for volunteers, people can check more than one box um, if they want to be on more than one committee. So I figured like that way, if people really wanted, like that was their thing, like maybe they've done a whole bunch of hiring before, we should utilize their skills and let them be on both committees. Um, but I also could see that some people could get totally burned out because if they're meeting you know, a lot for the next six weeks, they might be like, okay, I'm done with that part. I don't, I don't have time or energy to contribute more in the process. So I don't know. Is there anything else that you would want added to the interim hiring task force? I really like it. I really do. Okay. I assume that you have all of access to all of the questions you've asked in the past. So it's not, we're not creating the wheel, right? Yep, I have all the ones that we used in the past. And then I've, the last like two weeks, I've been collecting more of them. So, right, we have some. I'm sorry, I stepped away for a second, but um, is this the task force where it would be uh, like welcoming the interim to the school no. that kind of thing? No. no, nope. this is the hiring one. So this is the group that does like all of the stuff leading up to the oh, board Oh, you're talking interview. interim hiring task force? That's what you're on? Right. Okay. Sorry yep, about that. yep. Nope, that's okay. All right. The next one then okay. is the group that would be welcoming them. So the transition, right? So who's collecting all of, you know, the documents that they need, the keys, the code, the computer, all of those types of things. So that would be the transition, the interim transition um, task force. And I assume like Justin, these people would be working a lot with Justin for, you know, the collection of electronic documents and things like that. And, if we, and then they would help. Do we have a written document on how we onboard new people? Or is it just in somebody's head? I'm pretty sure it's just in somebody's head. Right. I mean, I, I, I so. I'm catching that the longer I, you know, and the, my institution was bad with it too for a long time until they finally said, you know what, if we don't write this down, and so now we've got a process. And so I strongly encourage us 
for to one of the charges for the interim task force is to write down the process of onboarding so that now we've got a process. So when we bring in the new person, we don't have to, okay, now what did we do? How did we do it? Uh, procedures are okay to have and keep somewhere, even though they're not policy. Mm -hmm. Right. I agree. And Sherry did this um, in 2012. So I know she has all of her documents. So I'm sure that she will help with that. And then I also kind of put in here like, hey, this group will also ensure that all of the stuff they collect is available for that final director as well. So, you know, so you're not read, like you said, we're not starting everything over with the final direction or the final director's um, transition task force as well. Um, Lisa, in case this gets published somewhere, right before first, like mid paragraph, like right before first days, should that be the yeah. first day in weeks or those first days in uh, weeks? And what those, yep, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah. All right. No, nothing else? Okay. So then when we get to the final director task forces, these ones, um, my kind of vision is that these ones really won't start until June, um, just so that, because I think there'll be some people that will be on both committees. And so I think it would be better that we kind of give, you know, break those up a little bit. And so then, you know, of course, the director hiring task force is going to do all of those same things, um, but they would also have that day at MSA at the end. Um, that's going to be like a nine to 12 month commitment, you know, as opposed to a six week kind of commitment for the interim. So I guess that was just my vision for what that would be. That makes sense to me because in January, that's kind of the hope to start like posting the ad, right? December, January. And then it would continue from there with the, the interviews and then the final selection, I'm guessing by April. Right. I think probably, a, hopefully a little earlier than that is what I was kind of hearing from Nancy. So, right. so I kind of backed up everything from that idea that hopefully we could bring to the board by like the end of February, three people was kind of my goal. Okay. So. Yeah, whatever Nancy said, I think is where we go with. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. And so then I just have the director transition task force, obviously, you know, kind of bring that person on. What do they need to do? And of course, this will be like a little bit, in my mind, this would be a little bit of a longer, they, they won't have to meet as much because some of their work will already be done by the interim transition task force, but this would be longer in that they have to do a little bit after the person's hired, right? Like somebody has to like meet the director on his first day here, his or her first day here and say like, here's your keys, you know, and then kind of bring them up to speed on where things are. And it might be that the interim and the new director have a couple of weeks where they work together and stuff like that. But just so that that's why I just put it as a little bit of a longer um, process, just because that in or the, the final director, we need to make sure that they kind of have everything that they need. So just that this group would kind of be available to help the new director. Right. And all of the firsts, right? I mean, there's going to be the first, you know, the board has this 12 month uh, calendar. They need to be helped through that 12 month calendar. And this is your first time you're, you have to set the budget for next year. This is the first time you, right? All of those things. And so I think that's, that's got to be clear to this group. And then, you know, where, again, the big difference is how do they get to know the students, right? And so how do they get to know the leaders of the clubs? How do they, you know, family picnic days, uh, you know, all of those kinds of things. Right, yep. All right. And then the other one that I just, I would like, and I'm not exactly sure how this will work, but I wanted some, I wanted some group to help us to start to think about what are the values that we're looking for in a new director? So, you know, what does the community want? What do they need? I mean, obviously there are some things that we probably all have in our minds about what this person should look like. How do they help, you know, our school do this expansion? How do they help with this or whatever? So I wanted to make some sort of committee that will mostly work this summer 
and then have most of their work done kind of by like about November. So they would actually be identifying values within the community, probably doing like a community survey, and then thinking about how do we translate the values that MSA is looking for into like interview questions? How do we like make that work instead of just kind of having maybe more generic interview questions? How do we actually get at what we're looking for? And so I've just been reading a lot of articles about the different like types of questions you can ask and stuff, but I think we just need to do a better job of that. And I feel like it just needs to be a different group. They can kind of take that on as they want to look at the mission and the vision. How do we make sure that those things are incorporated into the interview process? And so my idea then was that they would kind of meet mostly over the summer um, at the very beginning of the school year next year. Um, now remember the school year starts like before Labor Day, so they would do some sort of survey by September 1st, that would be like come back to them by September 15th. Um, if there were any changes we needed to make to the job posting um, or to even the director's um, job description. They could help us figure out how to do that. They could come up with interview questions. And then, you know, by November 1st, we their work would hopefully like kind of be done. But we would have this set of kind of values that we're looking at. They would have helped contribute those interview questions, you know, things like that. So I'm not exactly sure if that's like the best name for it or whatever. And I know that Nancy talked about doing a business inventory. But whenever I look up the term that she gave us, it just was always like, counting inventory at a business like how many screws do i have you know like that sort of inventory so i'll reach out to her to like get like the more specific name or maybe she has a copy of it or whatever and i think that's kind of what i was thinking about when i named this task force but i think it sounds great i think that a lot of people would be interested in participating yeah that's good yeah yep i think this is needed Okay, all right. Um, all right, then we'll go, whoops, wrong one, Gen agenda. All right, so we did that. Um, all right, so then um, I did put together a Google form to solicit volunteers for the task forces. And I just put like the description of all of the task forces kind of at the top. You know, I have to fill in some of those blanks or whatever. And then I just have the question, you know, which one are you interested in serving on? Or if you're interested in just serving based on need, or you're not interested, whatever. So I figured that I would send that out um, hopefully sometime this week, unless there was like an objection or you guys had something else in mind or. I think that looks good. I did notice, um, will you send it to us? Cause I just saw a spelling error, that's all. Otherwise I can tell you right now. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'll send it to you guys first. Okay. Cause I'll have to fill in some of these blanks too. So, yep. Yeah, okay. Google Forms sometimes is not good at recognizing spelling errors. So sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ju. Thank you so much, Gina. Okay. Um, all right. So my idea would I would send that out as soon as possible this week. So all right. Um, and then when I get the results, do you want me to come back to this committee so we can make um the committees up together? Or do you just want me to do it based on what people say they have experience in or what they want? Does it matter to you at all? <laughs> My feel is we're here to help you. You make that decision on what you need help with. Okay. I agree. Okay. And then just as a reminder that I think the board, well, I know the board wants just to see like the final list and then we'll just send that out in an email. And if anybody has an objection, then we would just meet on it. I don't think there would be an objection, but that's just one other thing that we have to make sure we do. Okay. So a final list of all of the people with each task force, is that what you're saying, yeah. Gina? Okay, easy to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So I don't know really if then, like, I wasn't sure if, like, I, I wasn't sure what you saw as your vision. So I didn't know if we needed to, like, have a standing date that we would meet, uh, the four of us, over the next couple of weeks or, like, um, I mean, obviously, we have to look at some of these other things the pay package for the interim. We have to look at that job description and really see what things, if we have a candidate who's only gonna work four days a week, what things are we willing to cut out of there? So we do need to have a meeting to talk about that. Um, you know, and then are there other things like, Jennifer, you said, 
There was one other thing that you thought we should do, expansion, personnel. Shoot, I forgot what it was a couple of minutes ago. Like one thing that like the interim should work on. Well, <laughs> I did. I, <laughs> I thought you did. I thought I remembered that. And okay, that's okay. Well, well, huh. well, like ten or fifteen minutes ago. Not. I don't know. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Well, we'll have to figure out those things. So, and I think that that's not something that those five committees should be figuring out. I think it's something that at least a group of board members should be working on. So if it's the four of us working on this, that's totally fine. We just need to kind of come up with some different types. In my mind, we need to come up with some different packages to be able to kind of meet the needs of different people. Because the one thing that people did always ask in the past is, well, how much it does it pay? And so we can't wait until like the final interview and see exactly what that person wants. I think we should have kind of some different ideas of possible packages that we're willing to offer. Because it might be somebody who's like gonna be awesome, but they only wanna be here two days a week. And my job, in my view, that's not enough. Two days a week is not enough. You know, so I think that, you know, we need to kind of come up with some of those things too. At least this group, I think, should be coming up with some of those. And that, and that doesn't necessarily have to be the package, like the pay part of it, but what do we need for this? Like, what's the job description of this person? Would you think that you would need those answers before you get the, the applications back or after you collect all the applications, then, then we would come up with those answers or what are you thinking? Well, I guess I was thinking if we looked at the director's job description right now, what, like what committees are we even willing to say right now that we don't, it's okay if the director's not on this committee or not involved in this process for the interim. I think that's something we could start to do now. And then, you know, based on whatever the person is doing, then we can make some compromises later. But I think we need to come up with a list of things we're not willing to compromise. Or, you know, if someone, I don't know, maybe for less money, they'll do less and maybe we're okay with that. Or maybe, you know, like I think the expansion, whoever does that, they have to do expansion. So that's a, you know, that's a committee they have to be on. So are we willing to give them a, Fridays off if they're on expansion and do personnel. So I think we just need to come up with some of those. It doesn't have to be like before I post the job. It doesn't have to be, I mean, just in the next couple of weeks, I think that we should work on those things. The other thing that I think is important there in your group of, two, or on in item two there is culture. Mm -hmm. We need, uh, somebody to help us evaluate and determine the direction of our culture, right? Right now, we don't have a culture of trust. Um, we've been questioned on our, uh, on our diversity and our uh, inclusion and some of those kinds of things. And so we need somebody that can come in and really help us. And I think that's where that values committee really comes in, right? We need to create, we need to, we need to figure out where we are as a, as a community and uh, build culture in and everything towards that mission, vision and mission, but creating what it is to be our culture. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So I guess um, that's kind of all that I had. So I think, I don't know if we need to have a standing meeting time for us, but I would like to establish another meeting. So then we could start to look at the job description and decide which things are kind of crucial or maybe, maybe we could kind of make like three categories, things we have to have, things we hope to have and things that we're okay with for a year, not having the director be in charge of those things. I mean, like, you know, a lot of the task forces, the director's on it, but 
they wouldn't necessarily need to be on it. There are other school leaders who could, you know, continue the task force moving in the right direction, even if the director is not on it. Does that make sense? Yeah, we want to leave some flexibility because again, this person will have strengths and weaknesses, right? And right. our job is not to build their weaknesses up so their strengths, their job is to use their strengths to help us with our weaknesses. Right, yep, perfect. All right, anything else then? Yeah, my question is, um, are we going to invite other people to this <clears throat> committee or will we just keep it to the fore? I'm just curious or how I have a feeling that other people might know like the um, what we need, what we'd like to have and what we don't need, um, maybe more than even I do. So I was just curious if we could get some of that information as well or what the what the ideas were for this. I know that plenty of involvement will happen on the um, task forces anyways. I was just curious. <clears throat> Um, I guess we could invite other people. I, I'm the only problem with inviting other people is what if we get like, we're kind of either way, we can get in trouble only because if we get way too many people who want to come, how do we say these people can't come, you know, or if we, I mean, and then if we get way too many people, then the committee doesn't function very well. So maybe it would be one of those things that we could invite like the chairs of the other committees to come in and help us with this. If we have those chairs kind of figured out, if you, you know, if you give me a week to 10 days before we do this, we should be able to have all those committees set up pretty easily by then. Here's a thought is we could uh, invite people from the community to give us ideas on what they think are in each of the categories. And then that would give us some ideas on how to flush things out as well. So that would keep the people, everybody's has that opportunity. And I know there's some parents out there that would love to be able to, to give us some of that feedback and can think about it uh, and then send it to us without having to populate a meeting. So would you see, would you like see that as a Google form going out to the community asking them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for those that and are so, interested, we're trying to come up with uh, goals for the interim director. What are some areas you feel uh, that uh, are on the top of the list for the interim to work on over the next year? Uh, and then what are areas that you think are not important for the interim so I wouldn't necessarily say have them put in the middle, but I would say, what are your top priorities and what are the things that we think we should not have them spend their time on so that we can benefit from uh, the top thing? You know, I'm not spitting that out while I'd have to type that out, but does that make right. sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I really like that. I, yeah, and I like the idea. The only thing that it worries me is that like, do people under, and maybe this is just me doing some wordsmithing, do people understand what the interim, like what the point of the interim is? You know, it's, it's of course to give us time, but it's also how do we explain to the people, um, you know, the constituents that um, this isn't going to be a person that does everything like we're usually used to doing. You know, because this person has different expertise. So maybe it's just wordsmithing that I need to do with, with it to kind of help them understand that. So. I, and actually, I think that's really important, Lisa, for you to be able to articulate a paragraph to the community so everybody knows why we're hiring an intern. Okay. You know, because okay. the board, you know, said, well, part of the reason we're hiring an interim is we couldn't possibly put everything together to hire the right person at this short a period of time. Well, that is one view. My view is we absolutely need somebody in between to help us heal, help us pull things together, help us before. So we're, so we're setting up the director for success, not bringing them in to, you know, it's not a hot mess, uh, but some of the messiness that we have that an interim director can help. Okay. All right, sounds good. I like having the chairs of each task force on this committee. I think that would be really helpful. Okay.
All right. So then um, can we pick another day to meet then? Um, the other task forces, um, hopefully, like I said, sometime next week, we'll get all of those put together and they will kind of start meeting. So they might meet before we meet again. Is that okay? Like, because I, I, don't, I don't think the four of us need to meet until we have the chairs of the other committees. Does that make sense? Okay. And then it gives me time to send out the two different surveys so I can get that done too. So- Do, um, do you feel that you're going to need help determining who the chairs of those are? Are you going to let them vote on their own chairs? What is your thought there? Yeah, see, that's kind of what I was wondering too. I didn't know, um, you know, in most of the other cases, we've always just like allowed people to kind of pick their own chair. Um, but I, I wasn't sure because I didn't want it to be like just me picking a chair. Like I felt like that's not very like friendly, a uh, friendly thing to do, you know? Okay, so, so let's talk through the timeline. So you are going to put out a, uh, an announcement that these are our uh, task, task force uh, yep. groups. And when is the date you're going to have people uh, self-select into those areas? Let's work from there. Um, well, I can send out the task force list pretty much any time this week. I mean, I just need to make a few edits on it. Um, so if they kind of did it by March 4th, that would be next Tuesday. Okay. And so then and, uh, what day would you have the committees picked right. by? Um, well, actually, we'll have them do it by May 3rd, because then by May 4th, I can have the committees like all put in order. Okay. And then, and then you hopefully... Could all right, so then you could send each committee an email to say, okay, this has been uh, the assigned committee who is interested in, right. in being chair, let, let me know by X date, right? Yep. And then you yep. may have, you know, zero candidates. Well, that's one thing. One candidate, well, that's good. Two or more candidates. Now you have, again, you have to think about what that process is if you have zero, one or more than one. Right. Yeah. And that may be so. where you need our help. Uh, so maybe we should schedule a meeting. So that's what my thought is. Okay. Now that we've talked about all this, you should have an idea of who the committees are by May 4th. So maybe May 5th at 8 a.m. We should, if that works in everybody's schedule or whatever, maybe that's when the four of us meet again to help you work those things out. Okay. Yeah, May 5th won't work because we always have faculty meetings on Wednesday mornings, but okay. it could be, I mean, after school, if that works for, for um, the three of you on May 5th. Yeah, it works for me. I, I'm done with okay. school at that point, so I can be anytime now. Okay, as well. sounds perfect. Okay, so May 5th then will be our next meeting. What time? At 4 p.m., does that work? Gina, is that okay? Even though I mean, school ends at four. Should we make it? No, that's fine. Let's make it four fifteen. Okay. Oh, no, four is or, fine. Four is totally fine. Oh, okay. Okay. Sounds good. And is that going to be a live streamed one? If it works, recorded. <laughs> Yes, I know it's the problem. It's Lisa's account, so we'll fix that, and then it should work. Yeah, yeah just so we let the community know, and then we need an right, agenda, yep. right, and the whole nine yards. Yep, yep, and I'll I'll always make the agendas and send them to Carrie. So I'll make I'll make sure that we do that, and I'll I'll send them to the community too, just like I did before. So, I mean, they'll probably get like four emails from me in the next week and a half, so five, so. Again, if you need any support on these things, that's what we're here for. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So, all right. And let me know if there are things that you kind of come up with too, that you're like, oh, we forgot about this or we missed something or whatever it might be. So, all right. Anything else? All right, so maybe Gina, you and I can just talk about how to send this link out so that people can see it since it wasn't live streamed. 
if you want to stay behind here. And then if Jennifer and Rob, if you guys are done, you're welcome to leave. So thanks so much for your help. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for your leadership. See you both soon. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, Lisa, I think what we can do is just, um, is hopefully send or tell Justin since it's in the cloud to post, to help us with getting it on YouTube and then we can post the YouTube video is my thought. Okay, okay. Um, we could so maybe even see. put it in the tab, like in the board of directors, like tab for this page or for this committee, we could even post the video there and then just send the email out to the community and the, like the whole community with the link. And then also to say that they can find the minutes in the tab. Right. How does that sound? Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. So I'm just wondering, is it in my account or is it in your account since you were the host? I think, I think we're about to find out when we close it like once we oh, end it okay. usually it's like a zoom a recording of your zoom is so we're about to find out i think okay okay sounds I'll good i'll just see you on the email to justin and ask him for his assistance <laughs> okay and then when because i really would like to send out the link and the meeting notes do you ha are, are you like i don't know like do you do them as you go or do you need like a couple yep, hours done. to get them done okay okay perfect okay sounds good yep. Okay. So I'm going to send uh, those to Carrie, right? Should I just CC you on it? Yep. Yep. But then I'll send them since, since we didn't do the live stream, I'll send them out with the link to the meeting as well. Once we have the YouTube Perfect. video. Okay. 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 And then All I'll right. Sounds help you with your zoom account to get it ready for live stream next time. Or I could just um, create the zoom myself too. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.